guys, welcome back to Kingdom Family Culture. I'm Mitch Crum. This is my wife, Candace. Hey, guys. Uh, this is part five today that we're doing. We're calling this one Hearing God. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about hearing God today. And we are really, really passionate about hear helping people to hear God and actually encounter God. And so, in, in the near future, we're going to be doing a whole series going into the details of different ways that God actually speaks and where we find those examples of that in the Bible. So, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. Again, we're really excited about this. Um, hearing God, you, you know, when, when we talk about being in relationship with God, you know, the, a lot of Christians, you know, we, we kind of throw around, well, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. And that's very true. But what does that look like? Uh, how does a relationship with God look like when I'm at work? Um, when the kids are screaming at home, you know, when, a, when I, I get a, a nasty message from a customer, you know, when uh, the, the car breaks down. How, how does it look like when we're celebrating with family and we're getting together? How, how does it look like when I'm in the shower? How does it, you know, where, whatever. How does it, what is relationship with God and really being fully, completely in love with God every breath? What does that look like? And, and how do we do that? So um, we've really been just kind of praying about this one and really feel like there's, there's three things that God wants to share that are really important to um, just having an understanding of hearing God and what it, what it means to, you know, how we can kind of be more open to hearing God. And so we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about three things. Number, number one, we've, as we've kind of talked to different people and um, the subject of hearing God comes up and we've led other people in prayer and everything, we, one thing that we've noticed is there's almost a general belief that God doesn't actually speak. Right. You know, that, uh, well, he, you know, he spoke in the Bible and that's all he has to say. Or, well, I don't see visions and I don't see, I, I don't hear audible voices and whatever. Um, and so, there's, so number one, you actually have to have a construct of belief <laughs> that allows for God to speak. And to speak to you directly, intimately, and personally. Um, so, yeah, number one, you just you there you have to actually believe that God wants to speak to you. Y you know, if um, again in in some in our our closest relationships, if if Candace and I are married, and I I feel like she has nothing to say to me, and I just I walk around the house literally not expecting her to speak to me, I'm going to miss <laughs> what she's actually saying to me. She's actually going to be speaking to me, <laughs> and I'm not going to be hearing it because I'm not even looking for that. So number one, there needs to be an actual belief that God not only can speak to me, but is currently speaking and actually always has. Right. And I think often, you know, when we when we talk about the matter of prayer, we when when we go to our prayer time, when we have our prayer time, right. we talk at God. And so I tell God how terrible my day was or how great my day was. I, I present all the things that I'm worried about. I'm worried about this, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about finances, I'm worried about somebody who's sick, I'm worried about the kids, I, I'm worried about, you know, that he's not going to have a wreck driving around <laughs> the city. I'm, you know, so I, well, oh wait, the good thing is to, to thank him first. So I thank him for his goodness that he gave us food and money. Okay, now I'm going to go on for another half hour of all the things I'm worried about. Thanks God, and I walk away. And that's the typical structure of prayer. Yeah. And, and maybe in there, I'll look up some Bible verses and say some Bible verses that right. might kind of pertain to my situation, make me feel a little better about myself, and I walk away. Right. But 
if I were to do that to my husband, if I were to say, hey Mitch, my day was great, blah, 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 and I just go on and on and on and on and on and on, and, on, and then I walk away from him, I'm sure somewhere in there he had something <laughs> that he wanted to share with me. A word of encouragement, <laughs> some advice, so, you know, whatever. I'm sure there was at least one thing he wanted to say <laughs> in my half hour of rambling at it. But I never gave him the chance, I walked away. Right. And how often do we do that with God? Yeah. Because we're not looking for We're it. not looking. People just don't know right. that. And, and the thing is, there, there's an idea that, well, God speaks through the Bible. Which he does. Absolutely. The, the, the Bible is not invalid. But there's so much in the Bible that doesn't pertain to my specific situation. I need to know, do I go to work out of the house or do I stay at home? I need to know, do we put our kids in public school, private school, or homeschool? He needs to know, what job does God want him to do today? You know, we need to know, do we buy a house or do we not? You know, these very specific situations that every family has. The Bible doesn't say, hey Joe, go to college. <laughs> right. The Bible doesn't say, hey Sally, I want you to be a hairstylist. The Bible doesn't give those specific details. Right. And so we can gain truths from the Bible, principles that help us to build our life. Right. But God actually wants to tell us who to marry. Right. God actually wants to tell us what job to do. Yeah. And if that job comes to an end, he wants to tell us, hey, do another one. Right. Like, I told you 25 years ago to take this job, but I'm trying to tell you now to change. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Like, I, I, I led and guided things perfectly for that job then. But now I'm trying to tell you a new thing now. Right. And while well, all those things lined up and we thought it was coincidence, we thought it was just, you know, the heavens aligned for us to do this, but we never learned how to actually hear God speak. Right. And so now that God's saying, let's move on, yeah. we're, we're missing because right. we don't actually believe or understand that God speaks all the time in ways that are so natural. Right. We can call it super natural <laughs> or right. really, really, really natural. Right. Yeah. That we miss it. Yeah. Because we're convinced it's ourselves or we're just completely oblivious. Yeah. So that's a, that's a really big thing. Um, you one, just just get it in your spirit. God wants to speak to me. And this is a really big deal, especially if you you really like if you would say that I've never heard God speak before, I don't I don't have any idea what that looks like. Get it in your spirit. Get get the understanding. And 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 you know, look at the Bible. And um, again, when we do this series, you know, we'll go through a lot of the verses that, that talk about God speaking to us and how that happens and everything. But but get it in your heart. Get it in your spirit. That God has stuff to say to me today. Right. And I would even say too, like. If I asked you the question, what did God speak to you today? If you're, if if the answer is, I I, I don't know, like I, I have no idea. Then the enemy's holding you back. You're you're there is a wall, right. and again, there's no shame in that. Right. But God has more. Like it's okay, you know. And as we're doing these these teachings and these videos, we're we're talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're talking to sons and daughters who don't know that they're sons and daughters. And so it, there's no shame. Like, God doesn't put shame on us for not hearing Him. But He is so passionate about getting through to us. <laughs> so just understand that there's more. Um, so yeah, so number one, you've actually just got to believe that God wants to speak to you. Number two, this works best in family. Yeah. 
So the idea of uh, the prophetic, you know, God speaking to me, God guiding and leading me, the things that the Holy Spirit is impressing on me, um, when, when I'm reading the Bible and it comes to life at me, all of this stuff, that, that all of these ways that God is moving in my life and speaking to my heart, that needs to be, there, there needs to be a, a relationship and preferably multiple relationships for you to grow that in. And so I would even say, uh, you know, we're, we, we talk about, you know, church and we talk about the Bible and, and, and things like um, the way that Candace and I kind of talk about it can sometimes seem a little bit like, oh, they don't like church and they don't like the Bible and stuff like that. No, no, no. We love, we love all the things that God has established. We love it. But we need to understand, guys, that our life source, our source of power, our source of intimacy with God is not the Bible. And it's not church. Right. It's Him. Right. It is direct one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. And so, in that context, that works best in family. <laughs> that works best, you know, in the church. <laughs> but when I say family, I don't just mean, like, people you go to church on Sundays with. And, and I don't just mean, like, uh, your blood. even blood, you know, blood family, relatives. If I mean, it is, great. If it is, oh yeah, that's great, that's awesome, if you have that. But I mean, like, brothers and sisters. Right. People, like, their kids hug you and your kids hug them. You're, you're at their house, you open up their fridge and you see what's going on. Like, you, if people that you're doing life with. Right. People that you're vulnerable with. Right. People that know when they ask how your day is going and they know how it's going before you say anything. Right. That's what we're talking, like, there's a level of, of vulnerability. Um, you know, and so, kind of the way to look at it is, you know, if, if God wants to, to grow us, God, you know, if, if we're at like a plant and we're spiritually growing and, and spiritually maturing, God is the life source. God is the sun that gives us the energy that we need. Family is the soil that we grow in. Okay, so there's, there's a lot that happens in, in the soil. You know, but we don't we don't actually get our our source of life. You know, another way to look at it is, you know, God wants to pour life into us, and the Bible talks about my cup overflowing. You know, well, if God's pouring life into me, and you know, and I'm I'm open, I'm just receiving. Eventually, that's gonna bubble up and pour out. And the people that I'm around, it's they're gonna slip in it. You know, <laughs> there's gonna be all this life laying around between us that's right. bubbling out of me and bubbling right. out of you. And people who walk into that atmosphere are gonna go, oh my gosh, there's life everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. This is, well, this is really cool, you know. <laughs> so there's, it's the idea of family that God is just pouring life into individuals. And that life is bubbling up and overflowing. And right. There's an actual sounding board. Right. I, you know, I mean, when God tells me something, I honestly don't know what to do with it until I process it with Candace. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And and that family needs to be an encouraging yes. community. Yeah. Like there Family in Christ. Right. And 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 that that family <laughs> there there has to be a mutual understanding that this is a safe place. Yeah. This is a safe place to be vulnerable because right. there is no shame in the kingdom. There's no, there's no guilt. There's no judgment. Yeah. We are here for each other and we're here to help each other grow. Right. And so we're not putting anybody down. If somebody slips, we're just going to help them get up. Yeah. Like we're, we're not going to push anybody in the mud that they fell in. Right. We're getting up Absolutely. and we're lifting each other higher. And so it's, it's a safe place that everybody has the understanding that we're free to make mistakes here. We're free to figure this out. Like, we may not always get it right, but by God's grace, we're going to grow. Yeah. And in a month, we're not going to be who we were a month ago. Yeah. Next year, five years, ten years, we will not be yeah. where we started because we are on a journey. And when we're on a journey together, we each bring a peace 
a perspective of God, right. of the kingdom, that actually builds everybody up. Mm -hmm. I see the world differently than Mitch does. Right. But when we're together, mm -hmm. we see the world differently than we do on our own. Right. And we each see the world differently now, 10 years into our marriage, right. than we did when we were single. Yeah. Because we understand, oh, God's given you a different perspective than He's given me. And so when we put that together, it's a more full perspective. And when we get with the others that are a part of this, um, this movement, you know, the, the other three on our team, they have different perspective, perspectives of the world. And so when we all come together, then we get an even more full picture of the kingdom because yeah. God gave each of us different personalities, different ways to look at things right. that then we get a more full picture. And so that's what family does too. It's huge. Is <clears throat> we get outside of ourselves. Yeah. We get outside of tunnel vision yeah. of, well, wait, the way I see the world is the only way to see the world. Yeah. And then we realize, oh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. The way I see the world is one way. And the way you see the world is another way. Yeah. When we put that together, our scope is bigger. Yeah. Yeah, and that a lot of that too goes back to I know a lot of people, I, I get it, you you've been wounded, you've been hurt by close people. I, I know. Yeah. I know that's hard, but get over it. Ugh, can I say that? I'm sorry. Yeah, get over it. Forgive them. Forgive them and move on because God loves family. He loves your family. He loves the people he put you around. And I know there's hurt there, but forgive them. Get God's grace in you. Get God's forgiveness. Let go. Release them. Move on. And, and get around family that you can trust, that you can be safe with, that you can be vulnerable with, and start growing. Okay, so that's a big thing we're talking about, hearing God and, you know, the, the prophetic nature of God and all that stuff. It, it works best in family, guys. Yeah. So there's no isolation in the kingdom. Yeah. Sorry. There's, there's no Batmans. There's no Batmans in the kingdom. There's really not. There's no orphans. Sorry, Batman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and if you don't have those people, ask God. Yeah. Because he has somebody. He has Absolutely. people for you. Yeah. So ask him to show you. And they'll probably <laughs> annoy you. <laughs> you know, especially if there's stuff that, that God kind of wants to teach you. Those those hard people to be around sometimes are the very ones that we need most in our lives. Yeah. Um, to, to teach us. To develop the character of Christ within us. Right. Sharpen us. Yeah, so, so that's just a few things on family. Number one, you got to believe that God wants to speak to you. Number two, get in a family. Get over your issues with, with family. Don't be isolated and be vulnerable, okay, with family. Number three, this one is another big one. Um, engage your imagination. Yeah. Or, or rather, allow God right. to engage your imagination. Yeah. You know, this is this is a really big thing. Um, I feel like, you know, Candace and I were just talking about this a little while ago, actually. Like, I, some decades ago, you know, I feel like there was probably a, a move um, in in the church where they said, you know, imagination. They kind of lumped it all together with, you know, fantasizing and daydreams and perversions and all the things that, you know, the. The, the, the mind just runs rampant, you know, and there's all this stuff in the, in the world that, um, that our culture constantly is pumping into our brains. And it's, it's true, it's, it's not good. It, it's, it, it's spiritual and, and soul junk food. It's, it's garbage. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, like, your imagination is God's house. It belongs to him and he wants it back. You know, I, I, again, I get it, uh, you know, pornography is devastating to the imagination. It, it, it just, it, it actually rewires 
uh, neur neural connections and, and um, connectivity within your brain. You can think of it as like roads. Uh, you, you know, some uh, I think somebody uh, well, there was a, a neural surgeon or, or somebody that I, that I was reading about one time. They said if you take like a like a hot ball of steel and imagine like a like a chunk of butter and you just drop that steel through the butter, it's gonna just melt its way through and go all you know go through and just create these tunnels and it's gonna sear off the connections and stuff that were there when it when it goes through and makes those tunnels. That's what pornography does. Um, you know, and, it, and it's obviously it's not just pornography, but you know, there's all, all the violence, you know, and stuff that we grow accustomed to. Um, there's, you know, news and, and bad things happening. You know, there's there's all sorts of stuff that, yes, it, <laughs> if you just close your eyes and, and imagine anything, it, it's likely that an image or a memory or words are going to pop into your head that aren't from God. Right. Um, but... Again, that's God's house, right. and He wants to clean it up, right. and He can. You know, so so I think specifically, we're not talking about emptying your mind. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about actually filling your mind right. with with the things of God. You know, Paul says in Philippians, whatever is pure, whatever is true, whatever is holy, whatever is noble, fill your mind with these things. So. That's kind of the difference between like Christian meditation, the, the idea of getting with God, and like Eastern mysticism. Right. Uh, e Eastern mysticism and, and the practice of the occult actually teaches followers to empty their mind so that it can be filled, you know? And that's obviously a huge open door for demonic spiritual activity. Um, so we're not talking about that. Right. We're actually talking about filling your mind with the things of Christ. Right, so that's like where Paul's talking about be transformed by the renewing right. of your minds. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're transforming from the negative to the positive. We're and, and not like good vibes, but <laughs> right. Jesus is transforming our mind right. and Literally. claiming it. Right. He's claiming that as, as his ground. Yeah. And so when we focus on truth, when we yeah. focus on God, then God fills our mind with thoughts of him, of yeah. truth. And so what used to what, what the enemy used to claim as his is no longer his. Right. The, the closer we grow to God, the more God transforms us, the more our mind is like the mind of Christ. Right. And, and, and the Bible actually talks about that. Right. Like we're, we're actually, we've been given the mind of Christ. Right. So think of it this way. You're actually sharing headspace with the creator of the heavens and earth. Right. Like the mind that conceived all of creation is actually in your skull. Right. Well, like the Holy Spirit who searches the deep things of God and, and reveals them that, that Holy Spirit's in here. Right. The mind of Christ is in here. Right. Guys, so that's like, that's incredible. Right. You know, so what, what happens when we kind of just shut down our imagination? And again, I understand. We, we, we do that because we, we have a past. We have a past. We've been hurt. We've, we've thought bad things. We've thought wrong things. We've, you know, we've seen things that are bad. We've done things that are bad. Right. I, I get it. But... Instead of putting up those walls, actually allow God to rewire right. your connections in your brain. And I'm serious. Like, actually allow Jesus to touch your brain, right. <laughs> to touch your mind. And, and, and because here's the thing, like, we put up a wall, we put up a fence, and we say, no, 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 I'm, I'm not going there anymore. I'm shutting down, shutting down the imagination. I'm shutting down all the, all the pictures. I'm shutting down all the things that that, um, that that come to my mind. Nope. And there's there's a difference between the Bible talks about taking every thought captive and submitting it to the obedience of Christ. There's a difference between that and just completely shutting it down. God actually wants to take those thoughts captive that aren't from Him and get rid of them and begin putting in 
his own thoughts, which are good and pure and true and holy. And when we put up a wall there, we're not just keeping out thoughts of the enemy. In fact, we're not keeping out right. demonic thoughts. We're not keeping out perversions. We're not keeping out, right. you know, all, all this different stuff that the enemy wants to do. We're only keeping out God. Right. And here's why. Because the devil owns the fence. <laughs> if, if you're writing a fence, if you're putting up a wall, you... Here's the thing. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a, if a branch all of a sudden says, you know what? I'm just going to put a wall here and I'm going to actually cut myself off from the source of life that flows into me. If you're not subject to life flowing into you, you're subject to the absence of life. You're subject to rot. You will actually begin to rot because the devil owns the wall. It's not yours. <laughs> it's not God's. The enemy wants to isolate you. He wants to cut you up into pieces and then slowly take over each piece. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's the plan of the enemy. God actually wants to completely heal you. He wants to heal your mind. He wants to heal your, your will, your emotions. He wants to heal your entire soul he wants to connect your spirit to him, and he wants your body to be healed as well. Like so, that that's what we're talking about. Engage your imagination. I know it can be a scary place, but allow God access to your imagination. And and two, just like we talked about before, with forgiveness. Yeah, right. Jesus rewrote your history, and so if in heaven's books your history was rewritten. God also wants to rewrite your memory. Yeah. And he can actually do that. <laughs> right. He can actually oh go and take out the things that he said, you didn't do that. Yeah. You didn't do that. And so you no longer tell your history through the eyes of separation. Right. You tell your history through the eyes of a son or a daughter. Right. And so, Jesus actually, he doesn't heal it leaving a scar. <laughs> right. He rewires. Right. And reworks. Yeah. To a mind that is perfect as Jesus is perfect. Yeah. That is holy as God is holy. And so, in that place, it's a safe place to encounter God. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to say too, you know, there's there's a lot of like um, new age, uh, you know, uh, kind of occult and, and mysticism stuff that, you know, that, that talks about things like mentalism, and, you know, hypnosis and, and all that different stuff. And as, as Christians, a lot of times our tendency is to go, <laughs> you know, it's all bad. It's all bad. That, my mind and whatever God wants to do that doesn't belong to the occult. It does. It never has. It never will. It doesn't belong to New Age practices. It belongs to God. It's His and His alone. Nobody can claim that. That's God's house. That, that belongs to God. And for too long as Christians, we've just let the enemy take ground. We've just stood back and said, Whoa, that's all bad. That's all bad. And God's saying, No, no, no. Come in here with me. Because we're going to take this ground back. Right. The enemy can't come up with anything new. Right. He's not creative. He only perverts the truth. Right. And so if there's an area of perversion, that means that there's an area of holiness. Our, yes. <laughs> and so where, where the New Age and, and the occult and the Eastern mysticism has, it's just a perversion of what God intended for us to have with Him. Yeah. All those things... Absolutely. What's wrong with it is God's not in it. Right. It's not connecting you to God. Yeah. But when we connect with God, yeah. there is life in our imagination. Mm -hmm. There is life flowing through our being. Right. There, is, there is wholeness flowing through our being. Mm -hmm. And there's a connectivity. Yeah. And so the enemy has just created a perversion of that yeah. that seems to be attractive because so much of so many sons and daughters 
-hmm. have rejected it. Right. And so the actual true connection with God so often has been lost. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. why do I want your Jesus if right. there's no life there? Right. Yeah. And, and, and the truth is there's so much life. There's so much that God has to speak to us. God is just, he's tired of, <laughs> you know, God doesn't get tired, but he is, he's done being separated from you. He's done, like, not being with you. Right. He is, he's just, he's so over it. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was so yesterday. Today, you know me. <laughs> Today, we walk together. Yeah. Today, we, we face together today and it doesn't matter because now we're together whatever happens doesn't matter because now now you're with me and now you you know my name and I know yours like God God oh, God is so patient and he's so eagerly awaiting the day that we'll just look up and go oh, that was you you're real Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I never knew. I, yes, I want you. <laughs> yes, I, wa I want to be with you, God. Wow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> God will wait eagerly. <laughs> but he's done with that, guys. Like, he wants you. <laughs> he wants you so bad. And he's, he, he, will, he will tear down anything that stands between you and him. So, so with all that being said, so number one, you got to believe that God wants to speak to you. Number two, you, it, this whole thing works best in family. And number three, you've got to allow God access to your imagination. So now once you are kind of operating in that, you have a basic understanding. Now we're going to talk about some ways that practically you're actually going to hear God speak.